<laughs> Here is a good reason why you should never joke with Mr. Prince. All right. Everybody talking about, man, y'all acting, you know, the young internet, they don't know any of this type of stuff. So they like, man, y'all acting like he the godfather or something. Oh, J Prince, man, he nothing but a man. You know, they just typing away. <laughs> They have no idea <laughs> of what Mr. Prince is capable of. So they just keep wagging off at the tongue. And we just like, okay. Because you know you can't tell the internet nothing. They don't know anything. They feel like he ain't going to come at my house. But before there was a time where you internet people were you know, subjective to this. Prank calls on the radio station was very, very common. And the guy that be on the Daily Show all the time, and then he do the Sullivan and Sons, uh, Roy Woods Jr. Before all of this, he was on the radio station. And this was like in 2006, he tried to prank call Jay Prince. Mr. Prince himself. So he decided to go ahead and do him and, and talk about Rap a Lot Records. Now, he was with this uh, company that wanted him to make an album because he had done a lot of voices. Um, you know, he did a lot of mixtapes for DJs and things like that, making, you know, doing all these prank calls and stuff. And comedy, hip hop, and all that stuff used to go hand in hand on these mixtapes. So Shamil in there and Pimp C and all these things. So he got a call from uh what's it, BCD Records, and they wanted him to do prank call album. But instead of pranking regular unknown people, they wanted him to do celebrities. And they was like You'll solely be prank calling black celebrities. So he was like, cool. They were going to give them the contacts in which they could contact these people. So they ironed out a few contracts and they flew back to Houston to start production on the album. They went straight from the studio to the airport. And... And... Um, the target for the day... They was going to do Bun B, Little John, Matthew Knowles, Vince Young, Tommy Ford from Martin, and Jay Prince. First up was Jay Prince. Now, the premise of a prank call was going to be him posing as the owner of a mom and pop store, criticizing Rap A Lot Records for not making as many hit songs as they used to in the past, and, and as a result, their profits were suffering. And he was going to demand that Jay Prince pay his rent. Okay. This is a bad idea. <laughs> but he's from Alabama. You know, that's so he's coming to Texas. He don't really know. He ain't heard. But, you know, let me go ahead. <laughs> Most prank calls, like he said, follow a basic template. Present a problem. Demand impossible solution, argue, reveal the prank, and laugh together. Jay Prince answered the phone and he laid into him. But instead of arguing with him, Jay Prince simply took a breath and calmly said, Where you at? And a chill came over his body. <laughs> he said, I tried to keep the prank call going. But Jay Prince again cuts him off and said, I need to see you face to face. Where you at? He was so shocked, he broke character and told Jay, hey, I'm a comedian, and it was just a prank call. He still didn't laugh. <laughs> so the audio engineer jumped in, and because he stopped laughing and jumped in and was like, oh, this just got real. So he it was so awkward, 
awkward at that time. So when he got on the phone, the producer said, hey, little Jay, it's Lucas. He changed his name. I, I'm in here with Roy. We were just trying to have a laugh. Jay Prince paused for like five seconds. And go, oh, you with Lucas? I see. I know exactly where y'all at. Hey, man, turn the car around. <laughs> and then he hung up the phone. Now everything is quiet in the studio. <laughs> he's, he's, he's up there hitting bricks. So the audio producer was in tears because he was so scared. And the producers begged him to call Jay Prince again and simply reply, I'm going home. One attempted prank call and he was done. He's like, I told them, look, tear up the contracts. My album deal was so messed up. They weren't, they, there wasn't much they could even do to make me prank the rest of the people on the list. So I didn't care if they sued me or not. I drove back to the airport and I hit it right back to Birmingham. <laughs> I was in Houston, Texas, a total of four hours. Even in the sky, I didn't feel safe. I felt like Jay Press was going to slide out of the overhead bin and be like, yeah, nigga, where you at? <laughs> Even now, 12 years later, I'm still convinced Jay Press will run up on me at a Rite Aid event and go, yeah, nigga, I see you getting them pills. <laughs> where you at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet in his entire life, Jay Press has only laughed a total of five times. <laughs> and four of them were Bernie Mac related. He's about business. Jay Press could look at Lava and say, Hey, Ning, why you keep burning everything? <laughs> the Lava would crawl back into the volcano. Here is a Jay Press prank call template <laughs> present a problem demand immediate solution apologize profusely <laughs> leave town <laughs> pray he confuses you with roy jones jr <laughs> jay is respected at every level of the game from janitors to a and r's to ceos he's always made moves that made hip-hop better his intervening and in is no different Say what you want to say about Drake and clap it back and push it. But if Jay Prince says beef is dead, it's dead. No one will cross that line. <laughs> My relationship with BCD Music was never the same after me walking out the studio. So to, to this day, I don't know if Jay Prince actually showed up to the studio to whoop me or whatever. <laughs> so um, June 22nd, go ahead and pre-order that album, Respect. Woo, man, that's a funny story. And that's Roy Wood Jr., y'all, talking about Mr. Press and his altercation and his run-in with Mr. Press. So y'all tell me what y'all think. Do you still think it's a good idea to social media prank Mr. Press? Thank you.